What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I wanna talk about focus stacking your Milky Way or night shot images. Um, typically, I don't have to do this because I'm using a 14 millimeter wide angle lens on my full frame camera and I don't usually get too close to my foreground that it's an issue where I have to focus stack. I could typically just shoot wide open at infinity and capture you know, uh, my foreground feature as well as the night sky in one shot without having to refocus or do anything like that. Now I have been using my 20 millimeter lens a lot more and that gets a little bit trickier because it is punched in a little bit and not as wide. So I either have to stand further away from my foreground feature or I do have to focus stack like the shot that I'm about to show you in this tutorial. So for this shot right here, I really want to incorporate both of these creepy trees in this bay. And uh, you can see how close this is to the camera. Um, now typically if I was just focusing on this tree, I could have shot this at infinity with the 20 millimeter lens and captured the Milky Way as well as this tree in just one shot without having to refocus. But because I have this added element right here, I had to focus on this tree as well and just blend the two images together so everything was sharp. So here is the original shot of uh, this tree right here to get this in focus. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. And I shot this at F8 ISO 640 with the 20 millimeter lens at 197 seconds. And I did it two times because I stacked them together just to reduce some of that noise. And plus I didn't know what was going on with this light back here, it was a car driving around. So I wanted to get some additional shots of this foreground tree. And so once that was done, I took a follow-up shot of this tree right here in the background. And that way that one's nice and sharp, but you could see this is soft. And it was starting to get darker out, so I had to change my settings to f4.5 and my ISO to 800 because it was getting closer to true night. Now I highly recommend doing focus stacking during astronomical twilight if you can, just so you could stop down the lens a lot more. Um, you don't have to crank up the ISO as much, and you might still have to do some longer exposures, so it's best to have an intervalometer to do that but at least you could get cleaner images and it's so much easier to focus stack because you don't have to take as many photos. So uh, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Here's a shot at 1.8 and I focus right here. You can see that's nice and sharp, but look how much everything gets softer as we get further away. If I was to focus stack this at 1.8, I would have to take so many more images because of how shallow that depth of field is. I would have to focus on this part of the tree and then go up a little bit further um, and then probably four or five shots just to do this first tree and then I would have to focus back here on this tree as well. So it would be a lot more shots and um, you would also, if it's nighttime, if it's true night, I would have to increase my ISO uh, or I have to take really long exposures with the intervalometer. So it's just a lot more work to get a cleaner image when you're you know, focus stacking at night than it is if you do it during astronomical twilight. So I highly recommend if you're going to focus stack that you do it during astronomical twilight. That way you can stop down your lens between F5 to F8. You could keep your ISO much lower. You still have to do some longer exposures with the intervalometer, but you'll have a lot less photos to work with in post-processing. Um, so it, overall, it's just better results in my opinion and much easier to work with. Now you will have to blend in your Milky Way. And if you don't move your tripod, you could just um, you know take that Milky Way and, and it's pretty easy to just blend back in with your other uh, focus stacked images. But in my case, I also took some shots without the tree in the foreground. This will just make it easier for me to blend the Milky Way back in with that foreground. So we're gonna jump to Photoshop and I'll show you how I do that. So I'm just gonna grab these three images right here that I need to stack together and go to Photo, Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop and I have my images renamed to Front Tree, Front Tree 2 and Back Tree. Now I had multiple shots of the back tree as well. Um, I was just kind of showing you guys really quickly that you could either take one shot or you could take multiple shots and stack them just to clean it up a little bit further. So that's what we're gonna do right here with the two front trees. We'll select them and go to convert to smart object. And I'll just make a copy so I can show you the before and after. But we're gonna go to layer, smart object, stack mode. Uh, we can just use mean. You could also use median as well. OK, 
Okay, so that stacked them together and cleaned it up a little bit further. So here is the before, and here's the after. So it's very subtle. Um, I also downscaled these images a little bit, so you're not going to see too much of a change like you would with the original RAW files. Um, I'm going to get rid of this extra copy, and I just want to rasterize that layer. So now what we want to do is uh, make a copy of these two images and I'm going to go to edit auto align layers keep that on auto and hit OK this is very similar process if you ever seen focus stacking you know in your landscape images it's pretty much the same workflow so you want to auto align your shots and I'll just check them really quick so that looks pretty good Now we have two options here. Uh, the first one is to select them and go to edit auto blend layers. And stack images, we want that selected. And then you can keep these checked on. Hit OK. And it blended them together, but you could see on the masking, um, it's very choppy. I think I could just do a better job. Uh, just blending it myself for this particular image because I have the separation between the two trees with um, the silky smooth water from the bay so I'm actually just going to do my own thing and create a mask and just blend it myself but sometimes this works good you know when you do the auto blend and sometimes it's not so good in this particular instance um, I don't think it did a b the best job that it could have so we're gonna do it manually and I could also just fix these layer masks as well but uh, let's just show you guys um, a manual way of doing things so we're gonna delete that and just create a layer mask grab my paintbrush and we're just gonna start painting in the front tree So I'm at 50% opacity. So I'm just gonna paint this really fast. And like I said, because I have the bay separation between the two trees, this is a pretty easy blend. That I don't, I don't need to use that auto blend. Okay, so that looks good. And if I hit the bottom of this tree, I could just fix that by changing the color. All right, so now I just quickly blended those two images together and we could either merge them. I'm just gonna stamp up, which is basically merging them together and creating a new layer. And now I didn't bring in the Milky Way shot and that's because I already imported it into my sky replacement. So I highly recommend it because it does a fantastic job. Um, let's go to edit sky replacement. And now I just have to shift it into the proper position somewhere right here and I just want to adjust these sliders and fine-tune it so let's zoom in sometimes when you have a tree you can see um, it, it messes up around this area a little bit so it's a pretty easy fix we just grab the paintbrush tool And we're just going to paint this back. Now I'm just doing this very quickly and generously, but obviously you can take your time and really zoom in um, and pick the proper size brush so you're not painting outside of the tree. But it's uh, doing a fine job. see it's a little messed up here so we just want to paint in here as well all right I'm just doing that really fast but you can see how quick and easy that is so I'm gonna hit okay 
And now I can do further adjustments, um, you know, to the sky if I wanted to, um, or I could just combine everything. Let's just flatten it all. You know, maybe I'll just go into filter, nick color effects. Do a quick little glamour glow. And I'll just grab the dodge tool, dodge the highlights a little bit. Switch over to the burn tool. And just go across the whole uh, sky right here, just to darken that up. And then you could go into the core of the Milky Way and just really enhance some of these dust clouds. But you get the general idea. The editing part is obviously all subjective. Do what you want. My main takeaway with this video is just to show you guys how to focus stack during astronomical twilight and why I recommend it over focus stacking during true night. It's just, uh, it's gonna save you guys so much more time to do it during astronomical twilight. So definitely try it out if you encounter a situation where you have a couple foreground elements that you want to incorporate and one happens to be really close to your lens. Um, I think it's, you know, it's a great technique and it definitely comes in handy in certain situations. But uh, yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out. Take care. Bye.